<laughs> this is my um, it's five o'clock um, song. Did you know that song? I never heard it. But <laughs> I never I heard it. this song. Oh, and let me clink first. Cheers, cheers, everyone. Um, you might not recognize this gentleman sitting next to me because he just got a haircut. It took me a second. This is Rob, and I am Gina, and welcome. Clink again to Wino Wednesday. Happy Wino like Wednesday. It's been a while, Rob. It, it has been a while. It's probably right? been three or four weeks. I think so. We had a we Crazy. did a we featured another winery a couple weeks ago, right? And that was our Wino Wednesday. Yeah, it was last week. But it just it's just seems it's so long. So we miss you all out there. Welcome, welcome. I hope everyone can hear me. Cheers, um, everybody. Cheers. Five live sound check connection check. Okay, I think we got it. <laughs> Pour yourself a glass, um, chat with us, sign in and chat with us yes. so we can make sure you're out there and you can communicate. George has communicated oh, that good. yes, he can hear. And hello, George, cheers. Cheers to George and everybody else. <laughs> I think everybody's popping up online now, yeah, just, at the, just in time, just as we are, just as we are. Okay, so here's a good story. Um, uh, Sarah, you know, our uh, manager in Del Mar, <laughs> she said she just siried. Um, she wanted to be, have a reminder to um, watch Wine on Wednesday. <laughs> and so Siri uh-huh. came back with some show that's called Wiener Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> she asked if it was the same thing. <laughs> um, to pull the curtain back again, I, I was uh, my phone is blowing up from text messages on my way <laughs> down here. Gina lives across the street from Petco Park, and there's a big series right now the Dodgers and the yes. Padres are playing. So mm-hmm. I was going to come down here just to be safe a little bit early and use our parking spot yeah. and stuff. And uh, I realized I had no gas as I left my house, and I was like, oh, crap, and I was cutting it close anyway. So I literally walked in at five, like five, five o'clock, five o'clock. a few yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So <laughs> but my phone was blowing up, and I think it was you and Sarah going back and forth with your with um, <laughs> Wiener Wednesday. With wiener, Wieners, Winos. We are both. Well, I'm both. <laughs> I cannot speak for Rob, but for myself. And uh, cheers out there to good friends Kristen and Linda. Yes, who hey. Are out there too. Kristen, Yay. Linda. Thanks for tuning in as we just get crazy and fun. Do you? So we've got, um, yes. hopefully you all have a cheese plate and they a bottle do. of wine. Shall we talk? Should we just set the table first and tell them what's on the plate before we go into the wine? Set the table, monsieur. All righty. So the first thing you do is take your lid off, <laughs> and yeah. then um, the, the cheeses will be listed on the sticker on the on the lid, and we're going to taste in that order. But just to identify everything for you off the bat, because really you can do whatever you want. The white cheese that is in the triangular shape and has a rind on it, like a white brieish looking rind. Thank you, Gina. Uh, and it's got um, kind of a gooey part around the rind. That's the queso Leonora. So that's going to be the first one. So feel free, free to just dig into that. The second cheese, well, that's lamb chopper, the one you're holding right mm-hmm. there. So Sorry, did this, I order? We're a little bit out of order. <laughs> but this is the lamb chopper. It's a lighter color, and it's kind of chunked up in little rustic bits. Um, so that's the lamb chopper, the lighter color. This long stick cheese, <laughs> which I'm just going to go like this, <laughs> with a with a dark rind on it. Show them the brown rind. That is Alex, and actually Alex is is number two on your lid, and lamb chopper is number three. But I think it actually should be reversed. So I think Gina was correct. Yeah, with the tasting order. Uh huh. Because mm-hmm, I am a whiz. <laughs> <laughs> and or something. <laughs> the fourth cheese is very easy to identify. It is a blue cheese, but it's infused with a natto, or it's made with a natto. So it kind of has that orangey cheddar look to it, with little blue, uh, little blue veins in that orange. Yes, which That's Shropshire. the professor will describe what makes it so mm-hmm. when we get to it. And that is called Shropshire. 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 Shropshire, my man. And then this, you guys, super treat today in the little tub is a um, bee pollen infused honey. So isn't that so cool? It's super creamy. You guys have to try this with all the cheeses. It's truly one of our favorites is to put the sweet honey with the salty cheese. Mm. So it's going to go with all of them. You can see which one you think it goes with best, but uh, that is what you got on there. So just to quickly get the other accoutrements, I see Marcona almonds, I see dried apricots, I see grapes, blueberries, uh, dried kiwi. That's fun. This is what see how you stole one already. Right <laughs> well, there's two, okay. Well, um, there's chocolate covered pretzels are my favorites, crackers, and a little flower, a little yeah. orchid looks like. So good, right? And you could eat that. So can I? You is could. It, does it taste good? It's edible. I haven't tasted I'm it. Gonna but have are a... you going to start with a, a petal as a appetizer? 
tastes like a flower. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have really okay. flavor to it, but it's pretty. <laughs> but it's pretty. It's all good. I mean, it was pretty before I... Yeah, tried. exactly, before he mangled it, which now I will just set it right here. Mm. All good. All good. So, Robbie G, uh, Kristen, our friend, is um, joining us from Maine. Oh. So we've gone national now tonight. Yeah. Friends from Arizona. Let's see, we've Maine. We have people from everywhere, so that's very, very cool. So, yay. Um, and Sarah, our friend Sarah said, eat the, eat the whole flower. And uh, Rob, <laughs> she specifically said Rob. Okay. So as the course goes on, he will eat that whole flower. That will be your palate cleanser between each one. I'm going to have another petal. Okay, he's going to do it, Sarah. <laughs> All for you. All for you. So uh, let's see. For those of you who did get the wine today, let me tell you a little bit about it. I already had a sip of it. I love it. Petite Syrah. So we did um, regular Syrah, S-Y-R-A-H. Mm -hmm. We've done that. But this Petite Syrah, S-I-R-A-H, um, not at all related. <laughs> what about Shiraz? Um, yeah, we'll get into that. <laughs> we haven't done that yet. We did a Syrah, and now a Petite Syrah, but not a Shiraz. Still on the list. <laughs> Anyways, um, Petite Syrah. Um, this one comes from the Fopiano Winery, and this is from the Russian River Valley, which is a great region of grapes <laughs> um, in Sonoma County. So it's kind of up by, this winery happens to be in Healdsburg, um, and it's kind of right in the heart of that Russian River Valley. So um, isn't that where uh, the French Laundry is? French Laundry's up there. I mean, God, a I lot of good stuff. A lot of yummy things. Yeah. Especially wine. <laughs> Definitely. So this one, Rob, do you know how long the Fopianos have been around? Uh, 125 years. That's Founded in 1896. <laughs> you, the professor. you think I show up without doing my research, Gina? Dang it, I'm trying to stump him. <laughs> One day I will stump and him. And I even did the math because I was going to say 1896. Yeah. Oh. Did I get it right? Yeah. Mm. You did get it right. Because we're 2021. Whatever, Rob. Too smart for me. <laughs> um, Giovanni Popiano, what a name, uh, came and started this winery. Um, and I understand that the Petite Syrah is kind of the family's favorite. Yeah. Um, and Which is really cool because you don't see it very often. But when you do see Petite Syrah, which was kind of news to me, mm -hmm. a lot of it comes from Northern California. So apparently because that grape prefers kind of that cooler climate that that Russian River Valley has, um, so they grow really well. And I gotta say, I adore this. <laughs> Look at the color, super, super delish. Um, I think it's just really um, fruity, fruit forward is what I would say. And I love that with cheese, love it, love it so much. So I'm actually really digging this. Nice. We can thank our, our Sarah for finding it. Yes, Sarah, uh, <laughs> Del Mar manager is the wine yes, buyer. So you can find wino. all of these in the Del Mar shop. I'm sure we have mm -hmm, some, some mm -hmm. more of these. Um, I really like the, the wine selections that we have up there now. So there's a compliment to you, Sarah. Good job. <laughs> yeah, well done. It's <laughs> the, so fun to try all these different varietals, right? I did um, I did quite a bit, some research on Petite Syrah because I didn't know much about it, to yeah. be honest. And and as a, the first thing I, that I noticed was all the flavor profiles. And it was like a, a lot of the stuff that you hear from the really, really dark grapes. Mm -hmm. So the grapes themselves are dark. Look at the color yeah, the of the wine. the color is super dark. I'm shocked. And so it has mm -hmm. like, um, we'll say dark fruit, which is like plum and um, the cherry, dark cherry, blueberry, blueberry, a lot of blueberry, mm -hmm. um, but like peppery, spicy, tannic, uh, all of that stuff that's more like a big cab or Merlot yeah. or something. Um, mm -hmm. And the other, the, the other big thing, oh, you mentioned a lot of it being from California. Australia, California are the two top growers. There's also a lot grown in Israel. Huh, in some of the that. highest quality in, in Israel, but it's grown Israel. in a mm -hmm. lot of places. I thought Petit Syrah just meant like baby. Baby, exactly. Baby Syrah. Syrah. <laughs> or like young Syrah. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes they'll call baby Swiss, like a really young, mild yeah. Emmental, they'll call like baby Swiss. You baby know? Swiss or Petit, yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a smaller Petit wheel or something like that, but, uh, but no. The, so the name Petit Syrah is really all from marketing. It has yeah. nothing to do with Syrah, <laughs> Syrah whatsoever. whatsoever. Like it's kind of <laughs> totally a misnomer, yeah, total confusion why it was completely named that. Because I was reading, Rob, in my research, if I may say, <laughs> it was cross-pollinated with a Rhone varietal Syrah, which we mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I guess that would lend itself to the Syrah name. And then a French, I felt sad, a peasant grape <laughs> called Pelourzan. Yeah, I saw that. Did you see that? So the poor peasant grape. So a bold Syrah. Cross with a peasant makes this petite Syrah. So there was a guy yeah, in France, a Frenchman named Francois Durif. Ooh, listen to your French. Is that, is that how you say it? I don't Probably. Know. I just, <laughs> I'm assuming. 
but his name is du- Durif, D-U-R-I-F, Durif, Durif. Durif. <laughs> and um, Durif. so he was a botanist, and he mm-hmm. was playing around with, with, with grape varietals in the 1860s or so, and he had um, some polisen, polisen, mm-hmm. I don't know how to say it, it's S-I-N, I think it's pronounced Sang? like an A. Yeah, yeah so or Polisan. Polisan. And, mm-hmm. and Syrah. So those are the parents. He accidentally cross-pollinated them, and he noticed this new grape growing, which was Petit Syrah. Yeah. And so they, they actually named the grape Durif after this guy. Yeah. Um, the California winemaking industry didn't really like that name for the grape or for doesn't the wine. Doesn't sound cool enough. Durif. <laughs> Durif does not. <laughs> I kind of agree. Yeah. So because it was similar to Syrah, they chose to call it Petit Syrah. Petit and, Syrah. Mm-hmm. And that's what it is to this day, or th- more often. But they're synonymous. I mean, it's still in some places it is known as Durif. It was a Durif. Mm-hmm. So what's interesting to me, this is how I will remember it, because it is that cross between the mm-hmm. Durif and the and the Syrah. I won't remember it for any reason other than um, hmm, I had a thing to say. Hmm. I don't. I'm not. I'm not remembering now. <laughs> Already too much. Never mind. My little uh, analogy or my little uh, iteration didn't work. Yeah. So, so if petite you ever syrah. hear something called der- derif, then just know it's petite syrah. <laughs> and um, I guess also the, the, the my big takeaway on on because I I mean I've never drunk this wine. I don't think like is that it's such a big and bold and dark. Yeah. I mean, you're saying fruit forward, but like, but it's, it's still, it's bold. yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot of, uh, so it can stand up to, to bigger cheeses and bigger foods. Exactly. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what it does with Alex. Cause I think it will stand up mm-hmm. to it. Um, but it's interesting cause Russian river Valley is known for Pinot Noirs, which that's mm-hmm. a delicate, you know, great compared, yeah. but this one, yeah, big, bold. I'm loving the Popianos. And I noticed on yeah. their website, it was like the first one that they talked about. So they must yeah. be, that must be the one they're most proud Something of. Something for their, in their mm-hmm. heart. Right. Um, I also read, this was kind of interesting to me because the family, 125 years, they had to survive through prohibition. Mm. <laughs> and this, I found this so um, great. Maybe we'll look back 25 years. We had to survive through the pandemic. Uh-huh. What did we do? No, what did they do, Rob? They sold winemaking kits. Ah. So very clever. I guess yeah. they couldn't make and sell wine, uh-huh. but they could teach people how to make their own. I'm sure they so were still making wine, you know, under the table, I'm sure. Um, well, and you know what? 125 years, they survived the first pandemic too. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so they've stuck around and uh, well done. Uh, so if you're ever up there, Healdsburg, check out Fopiano, everybody. Fopiano. Petitzera. Beautiful. So uh, shall we get into the first We shall. Queso? We shall. The first one, Rob. What are we going to do? The Queso is, Leonora? Let's do Queso Leonora, yes. And so, this is one that uh, definitely begs for a cracker, I would say. It oh, does for me? beg. I'm going to oh, make that for so you. Sweet. Yeah, well, oh, nice. you deserve it. I want to try one <laughs> bite of just the cheese. Yeah, queso Leonora, you guys. So queso, obviously, Spanish word for cheese. Oh, really? Um, <laughs> I taught you something, right? <laughs> mm. um, this one's great because it has the textures, like Rob pointed out. You can see that in the interior, it's still kind of chalky, um, crumbly. But on the exterior on that, you've got this kind of like a um, more creamy colored band and it's a pretty good whip. And when you see that on a cheese like this, the wider that band, the riper that cheese is. So it's got a good ripeness on it, right? I, I used mm-hmm. to compare that to like when you see the big redwood trees and you can- you Oh, count, count the rings? Count the rings. <laughs> like you can kind of tell mm-hmm. how old a, a soft ripened cheese is by, by how much that, that gooey part goes in towards the center. It'll never become fully ripe on a mm-hmm. cheese like this. Or f- fully gooey, I no. should say. No, because then it would just be turned bad. But the, the the riper it is, the more of that gooey cream line it's called, there is. And also the the rind, which is totally edible. I highly recommend eating it for this one. It's, it starts to kind of like like peel off a little bit. And it gets yeah. a little... Um, it, it just loses it its up. kind of shape. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it, As it gets older, just like me, I lose uh, the now. shape. get a little squidgy on the edges. <laughs> but um, happy and, and super mm. um, interesting. Right? Are you talking about yourself? Yeah. Oh, wait. Are we talking about the cheese? <laughs> mm. But I really good with the grape, too, by the way. Queso Leonora and a grape mm. and the wine. Good together? Yes. Yeah. Mm. This is great. Spanish cheeses, again, we say this, I th- think we say this every time. Super underrated yeah. and super delicious. And we have a vulture in our midst. <laughs> Panini smells <laughs> cheese. Hey, can I give him a little bite? Yeah. He won't leave. This is Panini for anyone that has not met Panini. Oh, he obviously likes cheese. He's Swiss. <laughs> so uh, yes, he likes cheese, and he really likes Rob, and uh, 
He loves Wino Wednesdays almost as much as I do. <laughs> but um, but his, his favorite is what? French fries. Yes, favorite is French fries. We haven't done that yet, but hey, maybe buddy. one day. Yeah. Hey, buddy. He didn't recognize me with my haircut. He didn't, yeah. He did definitely, you're suspicious. <laughs> I actually got more than one haircut, Gina. I got multiple you haircuts. You got multiple things, smart ass. <laughs> the um, queso Leonora. Back to the queso. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I had a bite, and that is really strong. Mm. And I don't know if we said this. I mean, it, it looks funkier, but the taste and the smell is always much, much more strong, pungent, everything the riper the cheese is. Uh, queso cheese from Lyon. So the, the, the mm -hmm. cheese is literally named for its region. And um, I, I, I wrote down some facts. This is from our Spanish class that we haven't done in so long. Um, but Castilla and Lyon is the name of the region. Yeah. And it actually um, contains two regions. One is um, Old Castile, and that's named because of the castles that are throughout the region. Mm -hmm. And, um, and Let's see, there was something. Uh, Lyon, Lyon derives from its, the, the name Lyon derives from its position as the base of a Roman legion or legio. Mm. So, legio. Oh. Legio. Legio, okay. Population 2.5 million. Um, lots of cheeses from the region. Uh, there's a famous blue cheese called Val mm -hmm. There's a cheese called Zamorano, which is very similar to Manchego. Manchego. Mm -hmm. And then one of our favorites that we usually have in at least one of the shops is uh, Monte Nebro, which is a really funky yes. goat cheese with like with an ash rind That's on it. That's gotta be one of the uber funkiest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you ask, this is really goaty. <laughs> it's super goaty right yeah, now. Yeah, it's super goaty. Especially mm -hmm. at the rind and the and the ripe gooey part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think it's delish. You with want the, more. With the cheese, I got damn it. He's not gonna leave, but I hope everyone doesn't mind. Um, <laughs> It really makes that more tannic and dry to me, uh -huh. the two together. So it changes the wine 100% and completely. Um, not in a bad way, but just in a different way. I prefer when it stays a little softer, mm. but I don't know what anybody else thinks, but. Um, I should say that this is yeah. not, this would not be like the typical cheese paired with this kind of a wine. Um, the goat cheeses are, mm -hmm. are more typically paired with whites and mm -hmm. more crisp and, and like acidic, acidic right? mm -hmm. type of wines. Mm -hmm. um, but the fun thing about putting together these pairings is to try, the idea actually is to try one wine with four or five or whatever, just really, really different cheeses. Yeah, diverse. And because one person's heaven is the other person's hell, mm -hmm. right? Um, but yeah, oh, so good. That is so ripe. Mm. I haven't had it for a while. Very good. Did you know there's one, you guys? Oh, if you anyone's near North Park, I think they're the only ones that have it at the minute. It's called Fuego. Uh, okay, so Leonora Fuego. Uh, they wrap, they roll the outside before it ripens in paprika, pimento, mm. and then let it ripen around it. So it's got this beautiful red, like kind of halo around it. No. And it's delicious because it's got that like spiciness from the pepper. Same cheese on the inside. Uh, identical but very very nice it's a nice touch if anyone's wondering like some, sometimes there's confusion about humboldt fog which is an, it's an american cheese from northern california it's a hundred percent goat's milk cheese so it would be in really the same family as this queso mm -hmm. leonora um and oftentimes people think blue, that um humboldt fog is a blue cheese because there's a dark ash that goes through the middle and around the outside uh, the, the Leonora, the Queso Leonora of Fuego, which is the one with the paprika, mm -hmm. it kind of has, to me, it reminds me of Humboldt Fog because there's a um, line, yes. it's just red as opposed to the bluish kind of bluish looking. gray. Yeah. yeah, so interesting. So I was told must, for Carol, our friend Carol out Ooh, there, hello, okay. must try with the honey. So I'm going to do it, it's going to be such a drippy mess, not you. I forgot about the honey, mm -hmm. so I have not tasted oh, that yet, and God. I must as well. Okay. I love this texture on this honey. That is the smoothest honey I've ever had. Great call, Carol. Honey with the queso Leonora, that's heaven. That's also a I good- I just melt that into a puddle. <laughs> Carol has probably heard us say this so many times now, but when we have really strong, pungent, ripe cheeses, a good way to balance them out is with honey or with something sweet, so I can see how this is going to be yeah. a match oh. made in heaven. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, so the question came up, Carol, what is the paprika wrapped one called? And it's called uh, Fuego. So, um, it's queso Leonora. Yeah, Leonora Fuego is what we have it as. Um, but definitely, I think right now, um, North Park's the only one. But our friend, uh, Sarah, up in Del Mar, is 
watching, and I'm sure she could be convinced to get some of it as well. For you, she <laughs> would do it for you. To speak for her. <laughs> you know, I just realized there. You know how the the California wine industry just changed. They changed the name from Duraf to uh-huh. Petit Sera. Sometimes we, Benissimo, we've changed some cheese names to things that we thought were more oh, marketable. A little bit. Some <laughs> of the names are bad. You can't just sell. What was the one we had? Like we had one that we changed. Gouda. Yeah, right. Seriously, it was called Goat Gouda. We're not just calling it Goat Gouda. We had one, yeah. and I can't remember what the... You probably you might remember. It was We changed the name to Abbott's Gold. It was an oh. onion cheese, but it was called yeah. something weird. It was... Yes. Like onion cheddar or something. It was just not <laughs> yeah. caramelized onion cheddar. Yeah. yeah. That, I think that's what it was called. So we changed the name to Abbott's Gold, which was actually yes. pretty... Yes, it was, was cool. Good. And it sold better because we changed the name. <laughs> we helped him out, you know? <laughs> There, there's a cheese that some of you, especially the, the, the folks who have done some of these, because you've probably tasted a lot of different cheeses, there's a cheese called OG Crystal. Mm-hmm. That's not the real name of the cheese, though. No, I know. It ha- the, the, the importer um, changed the name to OG Crystal because they just know how much people love crystals, and it really is a reference to, like, the, it's like original gangster crystal. That's, that really is That's where the really reference is. Where it came yeah. from. And That's so, so cool. There's no Belgian or Dutch folks that are going to know that phrase, original no. gangster. So you couldn't order that cheese that way there. <laughs> the original so, gangster people are like, mm. the, the real cheese is probably yeah. named like after the farm or the, the or the last name of the cheesemaker or something. I, I don't, or, or maybe yeah. they just call it Age Gouda. I don't even know. I don't know. It's yeah. crazy. But we love the names. It, it makes a huge difference. Humboldt Fog by any other name? Would it be as cool? No. Do you know where the name comes from for Humboldt Fog? Do yes. You know, do you? I do, Professor. Can you please explain? <laughs> Can, Can you please, please tell us? So, <laughs> the cheese is made in Humboldt County, which is known for their layer of fog that comes in every morning. So, the cheese maker, Mary, was inspired by the line of fog and hence named her cheese with the line of ash inside Humboldt Fog. Mm-hmm. And their line of ash represents morning milk, afternoon milk. Yeah. And when you look at that cheese, like horizontally, it looks like a f- foggy horizon. Yes. Beautiful foggy horizon. Very cool, right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Good. So, <laughs> queso Leonora, delish, super goaty, mellow it out with the honey. <laughs> mm. That honey is darn good. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I No, no more for you. <laughs> I will share. Okay. I'm cut off. I digress. You're cut off. All right, next to the Lamb Chopper, another good name, and what a segue into... I didn't even realize or think about it, but the Lamb Chopper is made by Cypress Grove. It's made by Mary Keene, the lady that Gina was just uh, just referenced, mm-hmm. who also makes the Humble Fog. Um, the Lamb Chopper is her That's sheep's good. milk Gouda. It's a play on words, so Lamb Chop, but um, Lamb Chopper, the, the logo of this of this cheese has a sheep, a baby sheep riding so cool. a... Hel- a helicopter, a motorcycle, <laughs> Harley, like a, Harley a chopper, yeah, a chopper, a lamb chopper, basically. Yeah, uh, no. it's so good. It is so good. Do you remember they had a cheese? They don't make it anymore. It was called UFO, yeah. and it was a sheep like in a in a spaceship. Um, for yeah. that cheese, unfortunately, you don't have that. There's anymore. so many good yeah. U cheeses. Yeah, unique euphoria. Euphoria. I mean, you calf to be kidding me. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> That's not for me. I didn't come I up with it. <laughs> but you would come up with something like that. Yeah, you definitely you would. would. Lamb chopper oh, wait, wait. is delicious. You, sh- you would? Is that what you said? Oh my god. I did say it. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> but lamb chopper, so sheep milk, you. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, sheep milk, cheese, humble, uh, Cypress Grove, yes. Cypress Grove, sheep milk, mm-hmm. Gouda. It's pretty young, so compare this to. Euphoria, and I mentioned I just mentioned Euphoria. Euphoria is probably our most popular sheep's milk gouda. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit older than this one. Always, the Euphoria is made by a Dutch company. I'm not sure who makes it, but it's um, it's a staple in our shops, and it's usually it usually comes in at about a year, maybe a little older, mm-hmm. maybe a little younger, but it's firmer and it's kind of like a little bit grittier than this lamb chopper. This lamb chopper is a bit younger, but you get that really rich and kind of sweet flavor from the gouda and the sheep's milk. Um, Cy- not Cy- yeah, Cypress Grove, the cheese maker, they are an American company. They're based in California, but the, this cheese is actually made in Holland. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a couple of cheeses that they have made in Holland. One is Lamb Chopper, which is their sheep gouda, and the other is Midnight Moon, which is their goat gouda. Mm-hmm. 
So they have there. It's made there, but they have an abundance of sheep milk, and they can make such a cheese there, mm -hmm. which we don't have here. But then they do some of the aging here. Of course, packaging, aging, and everything happens here in Cypress Grove in um, Arcata, California. Uh, so it's hard to say. You know, we call it an American cheese. It's really tough. It it does come from um, Holland. Sometimes there's there's debate over some of these yeah. things that we say. Like we, there's debate over. Who gets credit for the cheese? If, yeah. it, if a cheesemaker makes it and then they, they pass it on to somebody else to age it, who's really making the cheese? It's, it's yeah. a team effort. And it is a team effort. So we, we need to recognize both. True. <laughs> right. True. And then we're selling it. So we should get yeah. credit for that. Oh, yes. So definitely. Okay. Together, Rob, with the wine, spectacular. Mm. I don't know. I think it's because it's sweet. Um, Linda, our my dear friend Linda, loves lamb chopper. And I'm with you, Linda. And you know why? Because I know you like uh, petite basque. <laughs> which is also a beautiful yeah. sheep milk cheese, um, kind of in the same vein, they remind, they're sweet. Yeah. They're just beautiful. You know, it's, beautiful. it's really interesting, like when, when yeah. we, when I, when I do my Cheese 101 classes, mm -hmm. I sometimes will, will explain people like the, my, my thought process of how we put together the outlines for the class. Because, I mean, really, I'm looking at all your cheese books, Gina, and like I have a bunch mm -hmm. of cheese books too, but I, I just read every, every published book about cheese I would read and they were every book would kind of break the cheeses down differently right yeah and so I took all the different ways of breaking it down and I just like I ignored all the technical terms all the sciencey terms and I just said what's what's the most relatable way to, to yeah for someone to compile right? this and pass mm -hmm. this along to just someone who likes who knows they'd like the taste of cheese mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be all you know too too technical it shouldn't be too technical and I just came up with um, brie or brie style, yep. cheddar or cheddar style, gouda or gouda, gouda style, style. Uh -huh. alpine, which is Swiss cheeses, yep. sure. stinky or washed rind, oh, good. which is like Limburger, mm -hmm. um, Munster, and then the, the sixth kind would be blue, mm -hmm. Shropshire would be a blue cheese. Yep. And the other way to break it down, so so there's there's that way, yep. style by style, and then the other way you can go by, by milk type, mm -hmm. region, and then texture, which also tells you about the age, right? So, like, if something doesn't fall, it's not doesn't fall neatly into one of those six styles. Yeah. Then just go okay. Like for example, garrocha, which is a it's a yeah. it's a goat cheese from Catalonia mm -hmm. in Spain, and it's about three to six months. It's a, exactly. It's not a cheddar. It's not, it's not a gouda. Yeah. It's not a stinky. So there's yeah. So if you mm -hmm. think of it that way, a lot of cheeses kind of overlap, and so. So the lamb chopper is a is a gouda style, mm -hmm. but it's made with sheep's milk. So it also is comparable to cheeses that maybe aren't gouda, but they are sheep's milk. And so the petite Basque is doesn't really fall into any of those categories. Yeah. It's from the Basque region, so that's the region. Yep. It's usually about three or four months in age, mm -hmm. and it's made with sheep's milk. Sheep's milk, and it's actually aged in wax, which is typical to goudas. That's true. But it's not a gouda. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So. It's so it, crazy. it's all mm -hmm. confusing, but there just know that there is like if I were to draw like a graph, it would be those over overlapping. Graph draws a graph. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, my last name is Graph, by the way. <laughs> I forget what those those graphs are called where they they overlap. They're, yeah. So, just somebody probably knows. And so, Carol. Like some student, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, there's there's and it's the same thing with pairing. It's not an exact science, but you know there are certain pairings that. Um, that hit on more than one type, so it can right. be mm -hmm. it can be complementary, contrasting, and textural and uh, regional. It can be all in one. You know what is the problem, Rob? Is most of my pairings and all of this through this whole year. So this is the twenty sixth varietal we have done. They're all good. <laughs> like I love them all. Well, that's um, another another thing mm -hmm. that sometimes I'll say to groups is like, okay, there this. This may not be your favorite pairing, but it's still cheese and wine. You're never going to spit it out and be like, oh, never. this is terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, it may not be the greatest, and that's okay, but it's still going to be mm -hmm. it's still going to be delicious. It's still going to be delicious. <laughs> All right, I have answers for you. Again, yum with the honey. Uh -huh. Yes, just did lamb chopper with honey. It's a little sweet with sweet, and it's so good, and it's so good with the wine. I have to say. Kristen, our cheese class is in person coming back. Stay tuned to the end of the show. Yep. I will fill you in. Um, Rachel, hi Rachel. Venn diagram. Thank you. Yay. Does that <laughs> tell our Rachel? 
Del Mar, Rachel? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Hey, Rachel. Yep, yep. So we've got Del Mar representation today. I bet um, you she didn't even have to Google. I bet you she just knew it. She probably just knew it. <laughs> She's really smart, so she, she probably <laughs> just remembered that and knew that. So that's very good. But uh, yeah, so delish. Gina, can I ask you a question? Yes. Am I allowed to have a chocolate pretzel yet? You know what I got to say, Rob? I feel that all restaurants should put the dessert course in the middle. <laughs> Because otherwise you never have room for dessert at the end. I don't have room for dessert at the end. So then I don't get to taste the sweet stuff. And that is supposed to go, leave this one for me. Chocolate's supposed to be great with the petite sera, mm. So I will try to save it for the end. But yes, you can eat it any time you want. Mm. Yes, don't touch it or I will chop your finger off. Then you, then need, you need to tap me up. Yeah, he did. He's like, Rob, please, <laughs> please, please. Yeah. Just be patient. So good. We'll, we'll take care of you, buddy. So good, so good. Um, so Carol's making a chart for stores to pair with the wine. Yeah. Mm. Because, I mean, it's true. Oh, my God, there's so many good ones, Carol. This is the problem. We do have favorites that we have learned through the course of the year. Mm -hmm. But, again, they're kind of personal favorites. Some of mine might not be the same as yours. So it's hard to say how to put them together, but um, but some of them overlap. And I I always, I, I, when people say, what's the best Mm -hmm. this or that? What's the best pairing? Mm -hmm. What's the best cheese? Well, that's not the right question. The question is, what's your favorite? Yeah. Because your favorite is the best for you. Yeah, exactly. Who knows what it could be, Mm -hmm. but it's all good. Panini knows all of them are his favorites. (laughs) We are the same. (laughs) Hey, I know, I know. So, um, so, right. so next one is okay. We're going to Alex, the Alejandro. Okay, Alejandro or Alex, <laughs> as known in Germany. Smell the. <laughs> you gotta sniff this one. <sighs> I, I can just. It's, I touched it. Can you smell? This was a ripe yeah. wheel of Alex. Yeah, Alex, you guys. So this is big. Oh. The reasons is in a big Ding. spear. This wheel is about a twenty pound, twenty twenty five pound wheel of cheese. It's very big and flat, like a lot of the Alpines are. I'm gonna make raclette. Love Alex. Uh, it's great. <laughs> Do you need a toothpick or something? What are you doing? Can they see this on the camera? <laughs> yes, oh, he's nice. making raclette on the, oh my gosh. <laughs> At least we don't start the alarm like that one time. <laughs> um, Alex, so Alex is from Germany. And what part of Germany is Southern Germany, which is also known as Bavaria. So this is the uh, very southernmost area of Germany. I can speak for it because I have family in Munich. And um, the Allgauer region is the mountainous region just before you head south and into Austria. So Allga- Alex stands for the Allgauer Express Train. They used to take wheels and ship them into the city on the Allgauer Express. Hence they named the cheese Alex. Was your dad's name Alex? My dad was Alex. He's a Russian. Is there a better Russian? I mean, Alexander? Yeah, there is. Russian. I mean, is, it's just what it is, yeah. I, mean, I think half the people in Russia were named Are Alex. Are named Alex, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then my sister's named Anna. Like, that was a big one Russian name. Yeah. Um, you do know, do you want to know? Hmm. You know, my real name is Regina. Yeah, I know Do you know that. what that means? Um, queen of... Russia? No, just queen. <laughs> oh, Overall, really? just queen. You were right. No, I just guessed. It's not a guess, and it's true. Oh, wow. Uh, it means queen. You're so, royalty. Just so you know, you're amongst royalty, Rob. <laughs> just keep that in mind. Do you know what, uh, <laughs> what, what Rob means? No. It's like when you steal something. <laughs> You don't know what's wrong. Dad Basic. jokes. Basic. Big, big. <laughs> <laughs> Bayern, Bayern Munich. Bayern. 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 I know. I just know Bayern. that because of the, the soccer team. There's yes. a great soccer team. Bayern. Yes. You can picture their little logo and the Bayern. Well, the, the, so this cheese. These oh. are my favorites. Like the Alpines. Yeah. Speaking of favorite, I mean, if you know, people ask me what my favorites are, and I always go to Alpines. So to me, these are the. The best. I mean, they're they're both. And speaking of also crossing over styles, this is Alpine style, but they're also washed rind. So they're they're kind of both yeah. styles. That's why it's stinky on the edge. And that's why you the, you really get the aroma. If you are smelling something from your plate, it's it's most likely this one. And people sometimes will call like um, blue cheeses or really ripe goat cheeses. They 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 call them stinky cheeses, but really it's the washed rind cheeses that are the like the the real true stinky um, cheeses. Uh, th- this would be yeah. um, in the same category though as some not so stinky cheeses that are also firm like Gruyere, um, Appenzeller, Appenzeller, Beaufort, Emmentaler. They, mm-hmm. they, you know, sometimes they're stinky, sometimes they're, they're not super stinky. stinky. They kind of um, yeah. run the gamut. This one is, I mean, I just touch it. 
and it just <laughs> lingers on your fingers. And there's like elderflower or something on, isn't there elderflower on the, syrup on the rind? On the rind. So that's, you can eat it. I mean, it is just this rubbed, washed rind. It's super funky. Um, and it's a mess when you, when you touch this. It's, mm. it's reddish. It's, it gets all over. It is. And Gert, who does the laundry, says, <laughs> what is this on the aprons? Oh my God. And I said, it's Alex. <laughs> because it's, it's a, a cheesemonger's yeah. worst nightmare. Like mm -hmm. when you're trying to clean up oh. and there's just like elderflower syrup smudge all over the wire cutter and the, and the cutting board and everything's impossible to clean. Impossible. Mm. You, owe a, you owe money to the dad joke tip jar, according to Sarah. <laughs> and we want to know, do you know what makes it purple though? Because I do think it's elderflower, but mm. do you know what else makes it purple, Rob? There is something else and yeah. I don't remember what it is. Yeah, so Sarah, I'm we're going to have to dive into that with the Alex. And uh, Alex is going to be a stop on our Alps tour. Mm -hmm. 2022 mm. uh, we're going to be stopping where they make Alex and figure out why this rind is so purpley because the elderflower wouldn't make it purple we should we should mention yeah. that a couple of things mm -hmm. so the, the cheesemakers Albert Krauss who we, we will be visiting mm -hmm. the um, the trip the many voyages trip that we're doing to the Alps it starts and ends in Munich and it goes through Austria Switzerland mm -hmm. um, Bavaria of course and um, so we're, we're also going to do Oktoberfest. It was supposed to be 2020. It's now 2022. So we're, <laughs> wait, we're going to get back on track with all that stuff. Ooh. We promise. Um, but they're, uh, we're super excited to, to visit them. Yeah. And there's a bunch of other cheesemakers that are going to be um, part of that. Mm -hmm. um, what, the, the big thing that, the big thing that um, kind of helped us make a decision was that they canceled Oktoberfest for two years in a row. So we thought it's... Let's just wait till we can really yep. do it up properly. It doesn't matter that you don't like beer. It's a party. <laughs> it's, it's just a party. fun. It's, it's an experience. It's, it's, it's humanity all together. Mm -hmm. People from all over the world. And then all ages. I mean, literally, you will see a three-year-old and a 93-year-old in the same tent having the same adventure and experience it's it's something to be bestow so and the cool thing is like yeah. the, all our cheesemaker buddies that that live there they go you know they go every mm -hmm. year or yeah. their family doesn't so they have all the hookups so at, mm -hmm. for the tables and stuff um i was going to mention i we just we're going to be part of an event i just emailed you about it gina in um august i think it's august mm -hmm. august 14th it's with the German American Society. Oh yeah, fun! And it's going to be mm -hmm. a um, kind of a pre-October fest and summer fest. It's just an excuse to get together and drink yeah, beer. Yeah, a fest exactly. But it's at their grounds out in El Cajon, and we're going to have we're going to feature a, a German cheesemaker. But there, it's more going to be like a sausage and beer party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be super fun. Yeah. Yeah, because it's all coming back to life. So a mini summer fest. We used to go, Rob. I mean, in our, the little town of Gertztown, mm. they had the summer fests. Yeah. And it was so fun to just be with everybody. It was a miniature Oktoberfest just in each village. You know, they have these and it's a celebration of just getting together. Yeah. Well, how often do you wear yeah. your lederhosen in, in Durndal? Not if, enough. Not <laughs> I mean, enough. So you need an yeah. excuse to do it, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I know Roger looks for every excuse to wear his lederhosen. Oh my God, loves those lederhosen. <laughs> yeah, he wishes he could wear those more. <laughs> wishes he could wear it more. That's her husband. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so that with the wine, Rob, was like the case of Leonora. They are both so mm. Mm, biting. I preferred the soft lamb chopper with the wine just because even but the wine stood up to this i mean it still yeah. stands but it just changes the wine so much when you had those two other two cheeses so it's interesting i i think yeah. that the leonora mm -hmm. especially now because it's ripe mm -hmm. and the alex those are both cheeses that are on they're just at their like peak ripeness right now which makes them way more dynamic um, and I wonder if the lamb chopper even should have been before the queso Leonora in our tasting. I don't Maybe know. Maybe because it was so mild and creamy, but it's a nice switch. Yeah. A switch off. So you could argue either way. It's but it's, so inter it's interesting that it's like mm -hmm. you're, you're looking or what is a appealing to you is, is the cheese that I think is like letting the wine really shine, like not really take away I think away so, that, that neither of them take away from each mm -hmm. other. And so that's more complimentary. I think I'm feeling that I like the complimentary mm -hmm. today because I think those were contrasting the right. um, Leonora. But also the Alex, good with honey. If anybody still has Alex left, we ate those. You ate the whole spear too? Wasn't it um, two spears? I, well, I gave some to Panini. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I'm like, where is all the cheese? I thought we had more. Oh my gosh. I yeah, mean, he's yeah. just, you know, he's, oh, he's making starving. me feel sorry yes, for him. Yes, he Poor does guy. that. He definitely does. Everybody says that. Poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> oh, okay. That's good. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So now, 
I want. I'm really into grapes tonight. Are you? You are. You get your. Uh, mm. I'm into grape juice. If you hadn't noticed. <laughs> hey, Ro- uh, Robbie G. The Shropshire. Mm. Shropshire. 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 The Shropshire. Oh yes. My man, do tell Mm. the story of Shropshire. Well, so Shropshire is probably most similar to Stilton. And Mm. more people have heard of Stilton than Shropshire. Um, The the difference is that it's from a a different place. It's from a place called Shropshire. So, you know, a lot of cheeses, especially the classics, are named after their town, village, region. Um, Shropshire is in the West Midlands. So that's the name of the region. And um, there's a... You know, it, just like in, you know, the, they call it the Shire in, in the, in oh, the yeah, Hobbit yeah. and the Lord mm-hmm. of the Rings. The All of the counties in England and uh, the UK, they're usually called something, something Shire. That's so that right. just means yeah. like that's, that's the county name. Lincolnshire. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. like Link, Lincolnshire or uh, Shropshire, mm-hmm. Warwickshire, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so, so it is from the, um, the West Midlands and Shropshire is the county. So there's a bunch of little villages in that area. Do you want to know who the most famous person from Shropshire is in history? Would I know this person? You would know him, but him, there's a hint. Okay. Uh, so that cuts off half of the, the, the world. Okay. Half. Oh, now I've got it. <laughs> um, okay, I'll give you another, okay, another hint. Hint. Um, um, nine, 19th century. Musician, artist, no. writer. Um, he wrote. He was more like a scientist. He was, he really pissed off the church. If you believe in creationism, you probably wouldn't like this guy. <gasps> okay. His initials are CD, not Darwin? compacted. Darwin? Yeah. Darwin's from Shropshire? Chuck Darwin. Whoa. Yeah. All right, didn't know that. So he's their Darwin most famous son. From Shropshire. I, they, um, I went to, I was there for some reason. I mean, we were traveling. I was with my dad and my uncle and we visited. And there's also close by, this town called Shrewsbury. I think I've told you about this before. Shrewsbury. That sounds so... <laughs> and Shrew is such a not a good word. <laughs> claim, no, it's not. But the claim to fame of this little town is that it's where they filmed the George C. Scott Christmas Carol really? film. Do you remember that yeah. one? That was always my favorite. Oh, like the original. like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Wait. George C. Scott yeah. with Scrooge. And it just was like, I don't know why, but I, we, my family in always Shrewsbury. watched that one. It was filmed in Shrewsbury. Oh. And like you can go to the... Shrewsbury um, tourist, you know, center, and yeah. they have a, a like a walking tour of all the oh buildings my, and the, stuff that were in the they, movie. Where they filmed, yeah. Oh my God, that's so good. And uh, so, with that, so wait, I, Shrewsbury is part of the Shropshire. Yeah, so Shrewsbury area. is okay. like I don't know. I guess it's within mm-hmm. the county of Shropshire. Of Shropshire. Okay. Um, but anyway, I was I haven't really talked much about the cheese. The <laughs> cheese is very similar mm, to Stilton. To Stilton. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the difference is that Stilton does not get infused with a natto. Mm-hmm. This one does. So a natto is a, it's a dye. It kind of is the, you know, it changes a lot of cheeses to the color of this apricot. Mm-hmm. So a lot of cheddars, mimolette, which is a French cheese, is dyed with a natto. It is a totally flavorless and harmless dye. It's all for show. Um, so this, t- oftentimes people think that Shropshire is kind of a, a hybrid of cheddar and blue. It's not cheddar at all. No, the only similarity the, is that it's just the color. Orange. Yeah. It is so good with this wine, mm. Rob. I haven't tried it yet. I, I gotta say, it's so good. It's very mild, like to me, it's milder blue today. Mm. It's super mild, you guys. And here's, I guess the biggest tip I think, and I do think it holds true. The, the more blue you see, the stronger it will be. Mm. And to me, this is, you see very delicate veins of mm. blue. So it's not pow in your face blue. And so it goes very nicely with this wine. And it's super with the honey, I have to say, Shropshire. It looks just like Stilton on the outside. I mean, if you see it, it looks like a tree trunk to me because it's very crusty. It comes in a a form, you know, maybe so tall, 16 pounds maybe, Mm -hmm. of a drum shape. And the outside is kind of brownish. But inside, you would almost never know this difference between Stilton and Shropshire till you cut into it mm-hmm. and see the, that, that it is the, the orange color. But it's very delicate. It's very bright. It's lovely. I love it. Lovely. I get it's, it's lovely. Fine. It's lovely. Mm-hmm. It's br- brilliant. It's I, brilliant. <laughs> I get it's the brilliant. bluing on the finish. I don't like it has that mm-hmm. kind of like fudgy texture that a lot of the English cheeses have. Yeah. They have kind of a fudgy or crumbly mm-hmm. texture. So it's a little bit 
It's a little bit of a different texture than some of the French blues that are really creamy. Yeah. Almost, you can spread them. Um, but it's like a lot of English things. It's subtle. Yeah. Their foods are subtle, right? Mm-hmm. This is why I think people never think of English food because you're, it's they're subtle foods. Mm-hmm. They can be really good, but subtle. This yeah. Is. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple of makers who who make this one. Who they kind of go back and forth for like the title of the best makers of Stilton or yes. Shropshire. This one is Cropwell Bishop, who's Very really good. good. Yeah. The other one's Colston Bassett. Colston Bassett, Long Clausen. Long Clausen, I forgot about them. Um, so so a lot a of maker. people can make Shropshire. Mm-hmm. So what it's, what they yeah. do for um, for a lot of the European cheeses is they is there are rules and regulations in place. Um, you just have to follow certain rules in order to, for a cheese to take a certain name. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the most important one is that the, the animals, in this case it's yeah. cows, have to graze within a certain region, um, and then they have to follow certain steps. But um, they're, for, for most of the traditional cheeses, the same is true of, of Parmigiano-Reggiano or Gruyere, Manchego. Any region you go to, yeah. they will make all of the same cheese. There will just be different producers making basically the same recipe with the same, you know, this it might not be the same herd or flink yeah. of cows. I knew <laughs> or you were gonna animals. Say, knew that was coming back <laughs> at some um, point. But <laughs> they they all will have to graze within a certain region. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not only that, it even has to be aged in certain conditions. Um, and so they'll all take on the same name. The differences will be age or producer. Yeah. Right, just to give it a nuance. Ah, oh, isn't that so it's it's interesting, mm-hmm. the world crazy world of cheese. So a couple things. Um, Kristen was talking about, you know, we've, we've, we've gone around the world today. We have one California slash Holland cheese with the wine. Um, she's talking about, you know, pairing. She had a great garnacha that she loved. Mm-hmm. And just taking that garnacha and pairing it with all Spanish cheeses would be fabulous, yeah. right? There's a, a lesson of terroir, a lesson of place, yep. a lesson of, you know, um, the grapes are grown in the same conditions that the animals graze on that make the milk that make the cheese. So you get a lesson in that, and that's an interesting combination. Rob, Rob's got the kiwi with the Shropshire with the honey. I think that would be very good. <laughs> it's I was like going to suggest the apricot with it, but sweet, yes. you know, blowy, salt. sweet, mm-hmm. salt, and then sweet with a little velvety texture on it. You keep going. <laughs> you're, you're talking about what grows together goes together. That's it. There's the slogan. Grows together goes together. So super, Kristen, definitely. And then Sarah brought up a good point. Um, we typically, when we do our cheese tastings, you might have heard it before, go mild to wild. Mm-hmm. We were talking, you know, should the lamb chopper have been first, etc. But maybe it is good to break up mm-hmm. the powerful with something a little more subtle, mm-hmm. back to a little more powerful, yeah. back to a little more subtle. So yes, Sarah, Sarah's you definitely a chef. do it. Yeah. Sarah, what do they call that when they bring out like the palate cleanser? And then you probably know too. It's like yeah. they'll bring out like a um, in between courses. Yeah, they'll bring out like a not gelato, but like a sorbet. Sorbet, yeah, something <laughs> to cleanse the palate in between. Yeah, well, isn't that called something? I don't know. No. Could be. I know the first one's the amuse bouche. I know That's all I know. The amuse bouche. Yeah. But um, true. Um, George I also know... loves the pairings. Mm. Good, George. I'm glad. Yeah, I definitely. I, I love them too. I had my favorites: lamb chopper and chopper with the wine but super good mm. there's so many ways to skin a cat uh, i have to say go, i don't know i don't know that i had a favorite tonight i was really into each one of them for uh-huh. their, they different were so reason. different which i yeah. really liked yeah these were all i love that you're right completely different uh, oof. you know what else is good Versatile. tonight i was um i was hungry so, <laughs> so I was really everything's like, always better when you're hungry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and everything is fabulous just the way the so, day kind of worked out the timing yeah. just happened it just to happened be. to be so our recommendation is oh, you keep eating your flour Sarah will be Should disappointed she wants me to eat the whole thing Sarah he's doing this for you he still owes money to the chip, tip jar <laughs> for the jokes no it's good no. bitter yeah just, just yeah bitter. you probably need a nut or an apricot thank you okay so but to finish off you guys um, I think if you still have a chocolate covered pretzel Try it with the Petite Syrah because everything I read said Petite Syrahs are known for their cocoa notes. Wait, so we only got one pretzel? Mm, nice oh. try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on to him. It's been a long time. <laughs> oh, I'm to him. Onto him. Okay. Oh, intermezzo, Sarah said. Thank you. I've That's the word I was looking for. Entremont or intermezzo. Entremont must be French. Mm. 
And when are you not hungry is the other question, <laughs> and that is a very valid question. Bam. I was going to say stage, but I think that's when somebody's like interning. <laughs> Different word, not an intermezzo. Another chef word. But I'm trying the pretzel, the wine. Chocolate with red wine overall, I think, always goes, but let's see this one together. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you didn't get a pretzel. No. Okay, okay that's amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. I don't know. Pretzels are a good example of salty sweet all in one bite. Salty sweet and texture, like it's got everything. Yeah, people often ask, you know, because sometimes we put the Kikos, which are really Spanish corn nuts mm -hmm. on the plate. It's to give that salty sweet that in the bite and the crunch mm -hmm. and the texture. You know, we oh, also have, sometimes yeah. we get these chocolate covered Kikos, so they're like chocolate covered Stop. corn nuts. I haven't seen them for a while. Don't get started on them. <laughs> the other I thing, you. When, we, when we get back to doing our more in-person classes, but, and mostly in Del Mar because that's where we have the space to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we Well, we used to do a fondue class once or twice a year. Oh my God, we could just dip and... Mm -hmm. So, but remember we used to do, like we did cheese fondue and then we would do chocolate fondue. And we would have, we would just, anything we can think of to dip. So we would dip like truffle chips. Those were good. I just, I just saying, thought of it because I was thinking chocolate. of it salty yeah. and sweet. Salty, sweet. But do, Rob, you do bring up, and Kristen had asked, about live in-person events. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to tell. We have, you guys, our first in a series of called Pairings in the Park. So on July 15th, anyone that interested, live in person, cheese tasting just like this, uh, and we're going to be in Pioneer Park in Mission Hills. We will bring everything, you just bring a chair, and we'll bring everything else, sit there and pair in the park. Um, that's gonna be our first kind of 100% live, in-person tasting. You're doing one tomorrow, a whiskey one that's a hybrid. That's right. That's gonna be mm -hmm. um, half, some people are doing it virtually, some people are attending the whiskey and cheese mm -hmm. at seven grand. Yep. Sorry guys, that one sold out for tomorrow. Um, but this 715, it's going to be great. 7-7 seven, seven is our next Wine on Wednesday, where we're going to go do Chenin Blanc. Mm -hmm. If you've not had Chenin Blanc, I'm loving it. It's very interesting wine. Um, and that's gonna stay virtual. We thought for a while, we'll just keep the Wine on Wednesdays as our virtual one. Cool. I've heard that people like to just sit on the couch in their pajamas, drinking wine, don't need to drive. So we're gonna just keep it virtual for now. We'll keep the Wine on Wednesday virtual, mm -hmm. and we still, we still have um, the other topics that we will be getting into, so we've got yeah. So many topics to keep us going for yeah. years on, on, on Wino Wednesday, the, yeah. book, the book club and the other things that we have yes. discussed. But we're also going to do a little pairing in the piazza at Del Mar. Ooh. And Sarah, who is online, said that will be coming in August. We will put the date up very shortly. The July ones are on the web right now, so you <laughs> can go check those out for the in-persons. But we will be partying in the piazza in Del Mar. And that's a great little location. This thing in the park we're talking about, doing the pairings in the park, we're gonna start at Pioneer Park, and then we have other parks we're gonna to go to. Those are gonna be fun and delicious. Outside, I mean, mm -hmm. we're in San Diego. We have to be outside. Uh, we just have to be casual. And um, parks, we we're gonna have, make We can them drink wine in parks, yes. parks, right? That's yeah. the key. Those are the ones we're going to. <laughs> if anyone knows any parks that we can drink wine at, yes. let us know. First one, Pioneer. <laughs> we know the next one will be a Presidio. I know Coronado allows it, so oh, nice. we've got many options, everybody, but lots of in-person stuff coming. Um, Kristen, to your question. Um, George as well. In Yes, I hope we can see you too. Mm -hmm. um, and it, what we want to do, prob I'm going to say to the fall, Rob, we're going to do a Wino Wednesday night for all Wednesday people. It'll probably be at the Piazza in Del Mar. Mm -hmm. We're just, all of us get together, and we're just going to crack open a bunch of varietals and just have like a feast. A we cheese can, feast for open. all you Wino Wednesday people. How many Wino Wednesdays have we done? Like 30? This is 26 tonight. So we can open up, you know, 30 bottles of wine, 30 <laughs> different bottles, and just have 30 like, varietals. And we will have you seen those little wine parties or beer parties where everyone brings a, oh my God. something and then it's, yeah. every, you just have a sip of each one? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe we can not. make 30. <laughs> we'll talk. But uh, yes, so many options, you guys, for in-person. We're so excited about that. Uh, also have a couple things for beer people. We're working with Alesmith. We've got something coming up. Stay tuned when that one gets scheduled. Mm. Um, a couple other beer places. We're too. doing we're doing an in person one mm -hmm. with Thorn. Oh, um, yay! Do I know this? I, I don't know if it's on the website mm -hmm. yet. It's on our internal calendar. I just don't know if I've told you about it yet. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah. um, the uh, I believe the date is July twenty fifth. Okay. At, um, Th- at Thorn. It's at the Thorn in Barrio Logan. Oh, you talked about this. This is a cool spot, you guys. If you've never been, they call it the Acre of Awesome. I don't know if they're just telling me that, like, in, like. No, I think fun. they have a sign. Is that really what they it's called? Okay. So they go. Yes. Oh, they keep saying event at the Acre of Awesome. They have a hard yerba mate company. Oh, okay. So it's hard yerba mate, um, Thorn, of course, Thorn Brewing, and then there's there's a distillery um, back there. And a pizza. There's pizza mm-hmm. and another restaurant, and so there every business there is going to somehow be part of the pairing. So we're going to pair cheeses with the hard yerba mate, the beer, and then the three, and maybe the distillery, and then the two okay. or three restaurants are going to make a dish. Oh, nice. With Venissimo cheeses. So they're going to call yeah. it like Venissimo Day. Venissimo Day. Okay, and, fun, um, you guys. That'll yeah. be good. So, so July, be, end of July. Check out that spot, Stay though, because it's really cool. It is very, very cool. And if anyone's just hungry for Alpines, if you liked the Alex, before I forget, too, Sunday, mm-hmm. we have um, Friends of Fromage uh, up in Del Mar, and this was with Sarah and Christina, um, and it's all Alpine. So if you love the Alpines, Ooh, it's good. I'm going to be there or be square because yeah. those are my favorites. Mm-hmm. They're so good, right? Uh, so lots of things on the book. So moving forward, some virtual, some in person, some hybrids. Mm-hmm. We're just going to go with the flow, right, Rob? Yeah, and we've yeah. been doing we've been doing in persons yeah. a lot more frequently for the private events. So yeah, been, and that's fun too. We've been starting too. that up so we exactly. can go it's to awesome. your backyard or go to your work or whatever. So tell your, uh, tell your employers, like, we want a cheese tasting. <laughs> we, it's like, I want my MTV. I want my cheese tasting. <laughs> Darn right. Right? Let's start a campaign. I want my cheese. I have to tell you, Gina, it is so much <laughs> more fun for, like, getting yeah. back. And, I mean, we're downtown right now, and there's, a, like, a oh full God. sellout at the Padres game. So there's people everywhere, and it's just so refreshing and nice to see after so long yes after so long you guys i was walking yesterday i just walked and the game was getting ready to start so there's people everywhere Mm -hmm. i was grinning like a maniac like i'm sure people thought i was a fool like a crazy person because i was just smiling at everyone because i could see their faces and it was just (laughs) like so exciting crazy lady i mean i sometimes like to act you know a bit like a curmudgeon like oh i don't i don't i like to just be alone and i want to stare at a wall and go but, but, you know, I have to be honest, I like, I like being around people. I think I'm yeah. a bit of a people person. You are a bit of a people person. You know, I am. Even though I act like I'm not, I am. No <laughs> jokes. Del Mar Nobody Cruz. listens. <laughs> Nobody knows. Yeah. So it, what's interesting, though, you get some of the comments, you know, some people, you know, kept Kristen says to be able to watch from afar with mom, because mm-hmm. the beauty of the virtual is you can connect when you're not together. Yes. So I think it's cool to keep it still together somehow I, it, yeah well I, of I'm so mm-hmm. grateful for so what true. we were able to learn this year because oh, one gosh. of the things too like yeah. yes we're excited for for some in-person stuff but we're also excited because we for like a lot of the corporate and private things for big companies that want to have get-togethers and they maybe get together or they used to get together three four times a year yeah now maybe they save a little bit of money and get together once a year but mm-hmm. with technology being what it is now with Zoom and everything yeah. else, now we can do tastings, and we're, and we're actually doing more tastings for mm-hmm. people on the East Coast or in the Midwest, and yeah. and they even we can't ship out of the continental U.S., but they can join us, and we can if you're in London, we can say we can recommend you go to a cheese shop in London, and we can tell you what cheeses we're tasting, and you Definitely. can still jump on and you the can Zoom. Still do it, yeah, it's so true. Remember that? I remember being in Paris, broadcasting. Somebody was watching in Miami, uh-huh. but we're broadcasting to San Diego. And now we can do that, so we can bring everyone together under the world of cheese. In so, the world of cheese. no, you're so you're so right, yeah. Kristen. And, and, and mm-hmm. the other, you know, the other cool thing about the virtuals too is, and I think there is always going to be a place for those. I think so. Learned, Some mix is you can drink however much you want. Yes, and not drive, <laughs> which is very good for some people. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> definitely, there are some so. good things. So that's the yeah. silver lining. So it will be a mix, and but but gosh, I do want to see everybody's faces. We will do a thank you, um, Wino, for all of you out there. Um, like we said, to get together, to really see everyone, hug everyone, mm-hmm. eat tons of cheese. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a challenge. Yeah. Who can out eat Rob? We'll just see who could out eat Rob? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. I'll come hungry. Yeah. Yeah. You always come hungry. You never come stuffed. I've never seen you come stuffed. <laughs> it's 
impossible. I've never <laughs> it's stopped. It's impossible. He's a bottomless pit. <laughs> but on that note, um, hope we can see you with Shen and Blanc next time. Hope you enjoyed the Petit Sera. I'm going to keep going. It's Wednesday, after all. Um, thanks, everyone, to joining. All of our friends, Constant, George, Kristen, Linda, Sarah, Rachel. Oh, my God, who did I miss? Carol, everyone. I mean, thank you. because, And I love the comments and love that you love it. And we appreciate the support through the year. And we'll just keep going and see where it leads and learn new things. And that was Annette. <laughs> and take care. And hope to see you soon. Until next time. I want to see if he likes blue cheese. Oh, he'll eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. What were the language? What how do you say? Uh, um, adios. Adios, amigos. Uh, good bye. day. No, that's, that's the wrong country. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, cheerio. cheerio. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, definitely on that note. Cheerio. <laughs>